Welcome back to 101 East. Now, for many young Indonesians, the forthcoming legislative elections present their first opportunity to participate in the democratic process. Some will simply turn out to vote, but others will attend rallies and work as campaign volunteers. And for one 23-year-old Jerry Sambuaga, participation means more. It means running as a candidate for the Golkar Party. Here's his story in his own words. My name is Jerry Sambuaga. I was born in Jakarta. This year, I'm in July. In July, I'm 24 years old. Right now, I'm running for the House of Representatives of the Republic of Indonesia. For me, uh, to be able to participate in politics is a matter of giving contribution to the country. I think it's better for me, and I think it's better also for the society to have a young energy candidate who wants to do something for the country, uh, regardless of the experience. Okay, my father is uh, right now, is now serving as a member of parliament. She has been in the parliament since 1982, before I was born. Uh, my decision to uh, join politics, to be active in politics, is purely my initiative. I see a lot of problems going on in Indonesia. By seeing it's not enough, I would like to give something. Even though you're a politici uh, son of politician, son of the uh, party leader, but if you don't work, work hard, if you don't uh, interact with the people, if you don't socialize, if you don't uh, campaign, if you don't uh, know your people and then understand the people, they will not vote for you. Yeah, I, I don't think there will be any uh, chance to go back to the authoritarian regime. There will be no such thing because I believe since 1988, actually Indonesia has uh, gotten a lot of improvements regarding the election system, the political system, the uh, political parties, the participant, participation in politics. Everything uh, was reformed. With me to discuss the Indonesian elections are, in our Indonesia studio, Andy Malarangeng. With me in Kuala Lumpur, our activist and author, Fajrul Rahman, and Dennis Heffernan, a political analyst with the Van Zorj Report. Thank you for staying with us all. I want to get back, if we could, to the issue of what Andy was trying to say, which mm -hmm. was the improvements in Indonesia are evident in the economics, and that will continue to improve. Dennis, just give me your perspective on that. Has the economic change since Suharto been significant enough to justify the political situation? At the macro level, this administration is doing a pretty good job. Sri Mulyani, the finance minister, is a very bright young woman, and she's been doing a great job. But sometimes at the micro level, we are, we, we're asking the question, what does this care, president care about me, and what is this president able to do for me? jobs mm. and I'm not sure that any of the candidates besides mouthing the word jobs has done really shown how they would create new jobs but I mean they have done to an extent haven't they I mean mm -hmm. they, the country is moving forward is is that not good enough yes uh, but I think under Suharto administration uh, the economic development is uh, better than un under uh, Yudhoyono administration but the problem why we fought for democracy because of there is still poverty there is still social economy in inequality there is still there poverty is in the United States in Europe yes but social inequality in Indonesia is still bigger in Indonesia, uh, around 50, 52 percent is under poverty, under poverty line, and social inequality is very bigger, bigger and bigger now. What we need is political regeneration, is like Andi Mararangeng also. Dennis, we need leadership, and that's that's the most precious commodity in Indonesia. And you don't have it? Well, I think Suharto, in many ways, ate his young. He, any any competitive leadership was sort of snuffed out uh, in, the, in, as, in as diplomatic a way as possible. So we're suffering in Indonesia from a, from a leadership, probably a deficit. And that, guys like Andy are, are going to meet that, that deficit. And Andy, your candidate is the current president. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you respond to the suggestion that he's not a good enough leader? Yeah. You should be the president candidate. Well, look at around the world. Look at around the world right now. Uh, all the country, almost all the country in the world right now in contracting. Uh, but still, in to th this year we predicting to be uh, growing at 4.5 percent. So that is, uh, you know, better off than compared to many other countries in the world. Mm -hmm. And we are, uh, 
we are now in democracy. In Suharto, there is economic growth, but there is no democracy. What's, we, what's have, we are now a democracy with economic growth and modernity. Yeah. Yeah. let me address one of the issues that you brought up, and that is the fear of the old guard. Now, mm -hmm. uh, Prabowo Subianto mm -hmm. uh, is very much one of the old yes. guard. He's the former son-in-law of mm -hmm. the dictator Suharto. And he is running a very interesting campaign. His populism uh, and his political uh, maneuverings out in the countryside mm -hmm. could make him a dark horse candidate. Yeah. What okay, do you think the authorities still hunted us. It is like the, the, cor the Suharto corruption and also the violation of human rights. And then uh, you, the younger generation like Prabowo, Wiranto, uh, Prabowo, Wiranto, Sutioso, and etc. Uh, it is they are from Suharto era. Yeah. So what what what, what do we But this is now? my point. There is the, an the, undecided, the, the, the there is an undecided the electorate. There is an undecided electorate of enormous numbers, mm -hmm. and there is a lot of money being mm -hmm. sloshed around by populist candidates like him. Does that not scare you? Yes, that that is the problem. So so what 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 do we need now? The new generation and our political. This is our this is our time for and this for and this also for me also uh, to get the power here in Indonesia. But the the, the Suharto administration uh, people like SBY like Yudhoyono, like Wiranto is still there. So because right. we have still problem. Very we quickly, have, uh, yeah. The, the problem of vote buying is still something that a lot of people are concerned yes. about. And there are reports, Andy, let me put this to you. There are reports now that the vote buying is becoming so sophisticated that the candidates are giving the voters cameras to take into the polling booth so they can actually prove mm -hmm. that they voted for the candidate whose vote paid for it. How are you going to address allegations of improper elections? Now the uh, election uh, monitoring body is very, very strict right now anybody that is uh, or any party that is tra is violation violating the the rules will be uh, uh, it could be uh, deleted from the campaign or it, it will be uh, ruled as uh, the, is the it not being the, not no no to, no the to final voters so that uh, is still uh, is still problem in Indonesia. Is that it going to be a clean election? Yes, no, not yet. Uh, that is the problem in Indonesia. No, it is about the final voters' data. That is the problem. It is the heart the of voter our register democracy. list. Well, uh, you can get the rotten from the rotten data. You can get uh, the legislative, the legislative, the member of parliament, the the the, the rotten uh, member of parliament All also, right. and also the the rotten president also. You is can it, get. Is it going to be clean? I think in the main it will, but but the election commission, the KPU, was warned last year that the that the voter lists were were dubious, and so it's a question now: is it incompetence or criminality? I don't know, but there there are some problems with the voter lists, and hopefully this administration will will deal with those. And and but it is an issue. Okay. As to people being paid to vote. I think the the average Indonesian rice farmer or fisherman or working person will take the twenty five thousand rupiah and they'll vote the way they were going to anyway. Okay. Yes, very 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 because quickly of property, because of property. So exactly. they, need, they need only money, t-shirt, <laughs> and rice also. So why uh, under property democracy is still dangerous? Very very quickly. Yes. Uh, the electoral system is is a little bit complicated in terms of who ends up being represented at the end of the day, and it looks like we may see some coalitions forming. Mm -hmm. uh, how is the parliament going to look? Very quickly, after well, this. Well, par the parliamentary elections will dictate g largely the coalitions uh, of the parties, but in the final analysis, the parties will not determine the outcome of the election. The leadership will, the personalities. Is it going to be SBY? Is it Mega? Okay. Is it Prabowo? Who's I'm, not, I'm non voter. I, 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 I'm non voter in this uh, in this general election. I'm Golongan Putih, white group. But how will it uh, how will it end up? Uh, because because uh, I think it is the same. We need the new blood in our democracy and our legislative in our executive. The new presidency, like Andy and me, like. Okay. That. Final, so wo I think final it's word. Still, still the same. Final word to Andy. How is this election going to end up? Well, it's going to be a free and fair. I think you can see that from time to time. Election but who will election, win? The new, the new reformasi will bring us, an, you know, no, a No, we need the new blood in our, that and we will in our democracy. It looks we like need uh, the new blood in our democracy. Like we will the go debate is going <laughs> to continue for a very long time after yes. this, well into the presidential election. Yes. Gentlemen, thank you all very much indeed yes, for being with us today. That's all we have time for. This time, see you again soon.